Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are continuing the Morphe saga and we are currently in the match uh, against uh, Adolf Andersen, the German master, and uh, the first game Morphe lost. He lost by playing the Evans Gambit and it's one of the few Evans Gambit games that Morphe lost in his uh, entire short career. Uh, and this is now the second game. It's uh, really an enjoyable one and features a lot of cool moments. But before we check out the game, uh, something I forgot to mention in the previous video, uh, the result of the great tournament in London of 1851 one that Adolf Andersen attended. I uh, just wanted to show you something. So uh, here are the results. As you can see, uh, Adolf Andersen won the tournament. Okay, uh, here it doesn't say so, but uh, in the finals, you can see that he defeated Marmaduke with a, with a score of 42. Uh, but in the semifinals, who did Adolf Andersen uh, defeat? Yes, it is, it is our good friend Howard Staunton, uh, and he defeated him by a result of 4 to 1 uh, to, to, to reach the final. So just something I wanted to mention. And this was uh, back in uh, 1851 so some uh, seven years before before this match here with Morphe so even then uh, you you can see that uh, okay maybe Staunton had a bad day but uh, even in his uh, what, more you know uh, younger days he wasn't uh, uh, always that strong as he wanted everyone to believe. Uh, but he did have his moments and maybe maybe one day we can make like a short uh, Howard Staunton day just to check if, you know, if that guy could play chess or not because we've never seen a game. Uh, I mean, I have, but I haven't shown any on this channel. Uh, but getting back to this game, this is the second game of the greatest uh, match uh, of that era, Adolf Anderson versus Paul Charles Morphy. Let's see what happened. It's... Uh, well, it's it, it, it's a great one. So now Anderson with the white pieces opens with e4. Morphe replies with e5. We have knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. Going for the Rui Lopez. And Morphe, of course, goes for a6. The Morphe defense, or Morphe's defense. Uh, we have bishop to a4, and now knight to f3. And here we have d3, the so-called Anderson variation uh, of this line of, of the Rui Lopez. So basically, by reaching almost the end of the Morphe saga, we've, we've kind of... Uh, uh, you know, reach the, the, the beginnings of chess, uh, Anderson variation versus the, the Morphe defense. Uh, we have bishop to c5 and now c3. And this is something that it's still uh, being played today. If you, you know, uh, follow what's happening in the world, you can see variations like these uh, being played everywhere. Uh, in the, this year, I uh, it was in uh, February or, or March, um, uh, Le Levon had this position against Magnus Carlsen. Magnus Carlsen won the game very nicely. It was in the Magnus Carlsen Invitational. Uh, Magnus went with, with the d6 here but here we have b5 by Morphe challenging the bishop here uh, and now bishop back to c2 and now again uh, this position has been reached many times uh, more notable games uh, include uh, such as uh, Anand versus Wesley So uh, from the 2018 Grand Chester in Leuven uh, where d6 was played but here Morphe strikes more aggressively in the center with d5 uh, we have e captures on d5 knight captures on d5 and now h3 uh, just preventing this dark square bishop from being developed. Uh, we have castles by both sides, Morphe castles, Anderson castles, and now d4. Uh, sorry, uh, first h6 by Morphe, preventing this uh, bishop from being developed to g5, and only now d4 by Anderson. Attacking Morphe's bishop with e captures on d4, c captures, and now bishop back to b6. And now uh, knight to c3, developing with while attacking this knight on d5. We have knight d to b4. Uh, now kind of trying to get uh, white to play a3 here, uh, but uh, the bishop is attacked. So of course Anderson wants to save his light square bishop. His bishop pair is very nicely placed here. And now uh, Morphe would also enjoy placing his bishop pair on such nice diagonals. But if you go bishop to b7, a3 is just too strong for white. For example, knight to d5. Uh, and now we're just going to uh, capture it. Uh, knight captures, queen captures, and now queen to d3. Already uh, Anderson is threatening checkmate and you, you have to weaken your... Uh, position with a move like g6 so maybe uh, not as enjoyable then bishop to a2 is coming you know put, putting the bishop on this diagonal then queen to g6 becomes a threat so not an, uh, something black doesn't really need to worry about uh, if he plays correctly so morphe plays bishop to a6 this is the the more correct idea and now after a3 and knight to d5 anderson doesn't really gain anything by exchanging here because if you exchange then uh, morphe's light square bishop becomes a monster so after knight to d5 we have knight to e2, shifting the knight over to the king side for the attack. We have knight to f6 by Morphe, and now bishop to e3. Uh, we have rook to e8 by Morphe, and now knight to g3 by Anderson. Uh, knight to f4 uh, seems to be a more active move, and you know, attacks the bishop, uh, you know, 
controls a lot more squares but uh Anderson has a very cool idea and he plays knight to g3 uh, we have bishop to c4 by Morphy attacking the rook here on f1 uh, and now Anderson could just play bishop to d3 we could trade the light square bishops and you know not, nothing special about this game but Anderson is not that kind of a player and he did not earn such a name for himself in chess history by playing moves like bishop to d3 so here Anderson plays knight to f5 he says go ahead and capture my rook and it's a uh, it's um uh you know a uh, hard, hard capture to decline because it is the best move so yeah, it, it, it's not a correct sacrifice, but Anderson makes it correct. So Morphy goes for the rook, bishop captures on f1, we have queen captures, and now knight to e7, challenging Anderson's knight on f5, but now knight 3 to h4, improving his position, and now if this knight captures, this knight takes its place. But it's not a problem since uh, uh, Morphy wants to get rid of as many attackers as possible. So knight captures on f5, knight captures on f5, and now queen to d7, developing the queen, preparing to bring the other rook into the game uh, but now Anderson says uh, nope this is only the beginning of my attack and plays bishop captures on h6 so we reach the position from the thumbnail uh, I imagine if this will be the thumbnail uh, and Morphy now has to make a choice does he capture the bishop or not I mean it, it, it'd be silly not to capture it uh if, if you don't capture it you're just saying okay you, you do whatever you want I'm just gonna roll over and you know uh, do, do your thing uh, so here Morphe of course captures the bishop and now not capturing with check but rather queen to c1 going for queen captures on h6 and queen to g7 checkmate so this is Anderson's uh, actual idea uh, but uh, the uh, finding the, the correct path to defending this position is not an easy one. So feel free to pause the video and try to find uh, the, the correct way to defend this for Morphe while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that Morphe should not be defending this position. Morphe should actually be attacking. I was only tricking you. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's Bishop captures on d4. Uh, seems like an obvious move to play, but you have to see a few moves further to realize why this is so strong. Uh, Anderson, uh, Anderson, of course, played queen captures on h6, now threatening checkmate. And now Morphe plays rook to e1 with check. We have king to h2, and now there is one more move that is much needed to, uh, you know, uh, not only defend, but to also counterattack. Uh, so feel free to pause the video for the second time and win this game for Morphe while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, realizing that rook captures rook, queen captures knight, and all of the good stuff. So you know you, you know what to do. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen captures on f5. That's the move Morphy had to play in order to win the game, but he did not play it. Uh, for some reason, uh, for example, bishop captures, rook captures, and now black's, uh, black is simply mm, uh, too, too far up in material. Okay, white has a queen, but it's two rooks, a bishop, and a knight. I mean, that's, uh, that is that is winning for black. If queen g5 check, we can just move the king. If queen h6 check, we simply move the king to e7. Then we bring the rook into the game. We hide the king, okay, not there, somehow to the queen, uh, to the queen side. Um... Okay, not through this, but somehow, then maybe double rooks here, and, you know, uh, you, you, black would definitely figure it out. But Morphe, for some reason, didn't play this. Instead, Morphe played knight to e4, uh, which kind of works nicely, but uh, only if Anderson makes a mistake. Okay, now the bishop is defending the g7 square, so there is no checkmate. Uh, and if you go for, for example, for bishop captures... Uh, uh, no, not for bishop captures on e4, this was played in the game, but uh, if you go for knight captures to eliminate uh, this, uh, well, bishop, uh, then, okay, queen captures on d4, and now if bishop captures on e4, we can just play rook captures on e4. Uh, it's not a problem, we're not going to go after the rook, uh, and here black would be completely winning. However, after knight to e4, we have bishop captures on e4 by Anderson, and now comes rook captures on e4. Uh, you can't go for rook captures on... Uh, uh, on a1 because then knight captures on d4 and if queen captures on d4 you're getting checkmated bishop to h7 check runs into a well very a very well known checkmating uh, pattern queen h7 checking f8 queen captures on f7 and black gets checkmated so instead after bishop captures on e4 we have rook captures on e4 and now queen to g5 with check we have king to f8 
queen to h6 check. And now Morphy doesn't want to repeat. Morphy uh, brings the king over to the center of the board. Uh, he, he wants to win this game. So knight captures on d4. And now again, uh, what do you play here? The problem is you can't capture with the rook and you can't capture with the queen. If you capture with the rook, then rook to e1 check and it's game over. Let's say king uh, to d8, queen to f8 check and only one square for the queen. Queen to e8 and this uh, is now checkmate. And if you don't uh, capture with the rook uh, after this knight captures on d4, you could capture with the queen, but then you lose control over the c6 square. If queen captures on d4, queen to c6 check... Uh, uh, Anderson wins back his rook, and then it's uh, it's just a draw. So, uh, and uh, you know, Black's king is much more uh, wide in the open. So, if anything, white would white would be better here. So instead, after knight captures on d4, Morphy says, "All right, uh, I can't capture with the rook. I can't capture with the queen. Uh, I have to go for queen to d6 check and get the queens off the board." So Anderson trades here. We have uh, queen captures on d6, c captures on d6, and now rook to d1. And now we have two rooks for Morphy uh, against a knight and rook for Anderson. But Anderson is up a pawn, and those three pawns on the king side could be could be troublesome. So let's see how these gentlemen uh, played this end game. So king to f8. Uh, we have rook to d2. Now the knight can move and the rook will not have access to the second second rank. We have rook 8 to e8. Morphy doubles up on the e file. And now g4. Anderson is ready to start uh, bringing the king into the game and pushing those king side pawns. We have rook, to, uh, rook 8 to e5. And now controlling a lot of squares here. Those two rooks are just monsters. Uh, and f3 now. Attacking the rook here. Uh, rook to e1 and now h4. Those pawns are now going to be pushed forward. We have rook to d5. With this rook to d5 move, Morphy makes sure that this knight uh, cannot move because then we just trade rooks and then we are winning. And the rook cannot move because then the knight falls uh, and not much uh, to, to be done about white's position. So here instead we have king to g3. Anderson improves the position of his king. And now a5 by Morphy. We have h5. And now king to g8 by Morphy. King to f2 attacks the rook. We have rook back to e8 by Morphy. King to g3. Now king to h7. We have king to f4 and now rook to e7. And rook to e7 uh, is maybe not the most ambitious way to play this. If you really let the engine crunch this position, you will get uh, some sort of a crazy line like a4. Uh, and then after white makes a move, white can only wait for black to do, do something active. So let's say king g3, now b4. And now white will again ignore this. He's going to play king f2 or king f4. We're going to play f5 now. And now after g captures an f5 now we're gonna play b captures on a3 a cap b captures on a3 and now rook back to e5 and now we are threatening rook captures here because this rook is undefended and if rook to d1 or something the king cannot cross the the the, the e file uh, and if we play something like this then the rook captures on f5 if king to e3 then we repeat rook f uh, to e5 king to d3 now rook captures on h5 and you get some sort of a position like this where black has uh, excellent winning chances uh but tryharding in chess was not invented until Bobby Fischer started playing. Uh, so after king to f4, we have rook to e7 by Morphy and now king to g3. We have f6 by Morphy, king to f4, rook to e8 and now king to g3. We have rook to e7 and it was in this position on move 44 that uh, Adolf Anderson and Paul Charles Morphy drew their game as there is seemingly nothing more to be done here. And objectively now the position is a draw. Uh, uh, you know... Could be, but also, you know, in, in those days, any, I guess anything could happen. But uh, it seems it was the, the gentlemanly thing to do to, to agree to a draw here. Uh, so, yeah, very well played by Anderson. Uh, he now uh, defeated Morphe in the first game, uh, drew Morphe in the second game. And we'll see what happens uh, in the other games. As we've said it before, it's first to seven wins. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank the Fanning family, uh, Greg Fanning, Kevin Fanning, Mark Fanning, uh, Terry Fanning, Everett, uh, Becky Fanning, Turner for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the Morphe saga until it finishes. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.